Hello everyone and welcome to this SmoothComp webinar. I will be your host today and my name is Richard Carneborn. Together with my two partners Martin Johnson and Martin Varhild, we created SmoothComp, a tournament platform for combat sports about three years ago in early 2015. And we've grown tremendously over the last couple of years and we are probably now the biggest platform for combat sports in the world. And today I want to show you the things you need to do in Smooth Comp in order to create your event and start accepting registrations. I will also show you the Smooth Comp blueprint. The things that we have learned over the years as organizers and working with the biggest organizers out there. How you can prepare your event and make sure you have good attendance and that you can run a smooth event. Because that's the whole idea for us is that distribute the workload and make sure that you can enjoy your events as an organizer. So I will start by sharing my screen and then we will go over a keynote that we have put together the information that we want to share with you. So first off, here is um, the things that you need to make early decisions on. You need to decide on your format and the profile of your event. What are your target groups? Are you focusing on getting beginners or elite athletes to join your event? Should kids be allowed to be in the event or only adults? Or are you going for a family event where adults can bring their kids and you have one or two days where kids and adults compete side by side? This is an important first decision, so make sure that you know the type of event you want to run uh, because this will determine how you can market your event. Then let's decide on dates. It's very important that you check what dates are already occupied in your area and try to look for good timing. If there's recently been a big event in your area, maybe you should give one or two weeks for the fighters to rest before you schedule your event. And of course, as with anything, the earlier that you can post the dates, then the bigger chances are you get good numbers. So make sure that you have a good timing for your event. Maybe try to check a little bit on when people are getting paid in the month. So uh, make sure that people have money so they can spend that in the registration fee. So make sure you choose a good date for your next event. Then the venue. It's very important that you find a venue that is easy to get to, that it's uh, easy to uh, give uh, areas for warm up and also changing rooms. Is it possible to get food nearby? That's also a very big plus. If there aren't any restaurants in the area, maybe try to contact a food truck company. Uh, food trucks can just park outside of your venue and you will be able to still give lunch for your referees and for your staff and people at the event. So choose your venue carefully and you will have bigger chances of a successful event. If you're running multiple events, what is the frequency of your events? Try to set the frequency and then when you post the uh, information about the events, make sure to bring in all the different dates at the same time because then people can decide on what dates they're going to and uh, it will be easier for you to market your event if you have all the dates set already. So choose the frequency of your events and make sure to post that early on. Now it's time to market your event. Try to reach out to academies and the best thing is of course if you can do that in person. If you're going regularly, regularly to other events, try to contact all the coaches and the people that you know are competing on a regular basis. Try to talk to them, let them know about your event. You could also send posters by regular mail uh, but nowadays it's more common that you use email and social media to market your event. When you market your event, make sure that you don't uh, spam people that you're uh, sending out too regularly. That will 
create frustration instead. So try to set uh, like an interval on how and when you are going to market the event. Usually we try to do it one time per month uh, by email, but on social media you can be more frequent. When you, when you are recruiting staff members, choose from strategic academies to increase your attendance. And with this, we are meaning that when you are recruiting your staff members, try to contact academies nearby, try to have referees from other academies uh, to be at your event, because if they are going, they will surely bring more fighters to your event. So always try to have referees from different academies and try to contact staff members that you know are working, can work on your event, uh, and try to have them bring in their uh, fighters from that academy. When you are posting on social media, try to have a manuscript and decide on how you're going to tell the story of your upcoming event. And then try to release that regularly up to the event. We had a big success uh, with writing a manuscript and telling people about fighters that have recently signed up. Maybe you have a video of uh, fighters that fought in your earlier event and you can link to that and say that now this fighter has signed up again. Remember this fight that he had last year against. <laughs> so try to tell a story. Try to make people uh, feel your passion and also that they uh, get involved in this story. And then try to post it regularly so that people have uh, big anticipation about uh, the upcoming event. Coupon codes is something that we offer in SmoothComp and with coupon codes you can um, set a code that can give athletes uh, the chance to get uh, um, a better price when they sign up. So use coupon codes or limited offers to boost your registrations. We've seen organizers use this very effectively they create a coupon code and they say this coupon code is coupon code is only available for these uh, coming three hours or only today sign up now to get 50 percent off your registration and if you do that early on in the registration process you will see that more people sign up and that will of course create some um, hype about your event that you have a lot of registrations early on so use the coupon codes and uh, try to boost your registrations. The best thing that you can do to market your event is to use our event finder. Make sure that your event has the correct location in the settings for your event. We're using Google a Google's API. So if you write in the address to your venue, then the Smooth Cup calendar will find that address and display your event in our world map. And this map is incredible because you can find events in your area. So it will search uh, for your um, IP address where you are located and it will show events close to where you live. So make sure that you use our event finder and that you have the correct location written down so that people can see that you have an event in their area. Now I want to talk a little bit about SmoothComp's philosophy. Our philosophy is to distribute the workload as much as possible. This will create less stress at your events. And what do we mean by distributing the workload? Well, the most common question you get as an organizer is probably, when is my next fight? And when am I fighting? Or who am I fighting? And you get a lot of things beforehand if you um, accept that people can send you emails that they want to change the registration for for some reason but with smooth comp you don't have to do that because we have built a system so that it it works from a personal account so the personal account is very important that you market and when you market the personal account and the coach accounts and tell people, the athletes and the coaches, that they can register and pay and edit and cancel by themselves. You don't have to answer any emails that says, uh, can you please change my weight class or 
can you please do this and that? Because if you promote it well, then people understand that they will be able to change everything by themselves. So this will create less stress uh, when working in the build-up for your event. And also during the event, people will have access to their own information. They will see when they are fighting. They will see when their friends are fighting. The coaches can see uh, all fighters from their academy when they are fighting. It's very easy to just filter for my academy. And then you will see everything related to that academy on what mat and who they are fighting and what time they are fighting. So it's very important that you make sure that you distribute the workload and that will create less stress for your events. When working at the event, please remember that this the way we designed everything is to promote one small event instead of one big event. So if you have eight mats, you're actually organizing eight small tournaments instead of one big event. See each mat or each ring as their individual tournament and try to have the staff working on that mat to feel as they are organizing their own little tournament. They will try to have as good atmosphere as possible at their mat. They will try to be on time. They will make sure that everything runs smoothly on their mat. And when you do that, it will be so much easier for you as, an, as the event organizer to help out. You're not organizing one big event. There's actually small events going on and they will help you. Um, and usually they are running their event all by themselves. So there's no need for you to interact with everything because if you have this going, then it will be easier for them to solve their own problems. So that's how we see it. Uh, it's just some small tips for you how to prepare for your event. And um, now I'd like to um, show you a little bit about the webinar content. We will go over how you can create your first event. We will talk a little bit about how to set up your entries. I'm going to show you discounts and coupon codes. Let's talk a little bit about the event finder, uh, what different pay ga payment gateways we're offering. And then after that, we'll show you how you can start accepting registrations. We're going to show you a little bit about bracket packages, how you can create brackets, how you can move and copy and filter uh, to make sure you find your athletes. And then a little bit about scheduling and how to split brackets. And after that, we end up with starting the first fight. Yeah, that was the um, intro for uh, this webinar. And um, I hope you like uh, the small things that we put together. Uh, it can really help if you're preparing for your event in, in the best way possible. Now I want to share my screen and go over to our webinar demo. Uh, first, I'd like to show you how you can create your first event. So I will go over to the organizer manager. This is uh, for you that are having organizer manager access. You will have this view. Um, here it says smooth comp. It says my current balance of my credits. Um, Oops, I haven't turned on auto refill. That should, of course, be uh, on. And then here is the billing notification that says that we're going to email you when you reach five credits or less. Um, so this information at the top is uh, for you to make sure that you have control over your account. Then uh, here in the organization settings, I will choose my currency. We support a lot of different currencies, as you can see here. So pick your currency. Input your payment settings. Here is a test key for Stripe. If you're using Stripe, then you should input the information from Stripe that you get here. We also support Ideal. Uh, we have um, a bank contact uh, for using Stripe. We have PayPal. We have a MasterCard. You can also put a, set up a custom payments. Custom payments would be if somebody decides to pay at the event or by a bank transfer. So 
the organizer manager is for you to prepare for your event before you can start accepting registrations and we definitely recommend to use an online payment solution stripe or paypal or some of the other online providers that we uh, offer with that uh, if fighters cancel uh, we support automatic refunds meaning that if they cancel they will get their money back in their credit card and you don't have to do anything so it's very very um, easy to use online uh, payments so please look into that when you're setting up your event there's also one more thing I'd like to show here and that it's under admins and staff and this is where you say who can have access to my event we have three different levels we have an organizer a manager and staff organizers are the ones that should be able to do everything with your event create the event um, set up payment gateways uh, do refunds everything that has to do with the event so make sure that you give the organizer level only to people that should be able to access any of that information and then we have the manager access level the manager he can do pretty much everything but he is not allowed to do anything regarding payments he cannot do any refunds he cannot uh, uh, create uh, or change any API um, information and then we have the staff level staff level are for those who's working during the day maybe at the event they are allowed to do weigh-ins they are allowed to uh, use the scoreboards and they can publish uh, medal information so decide on who should be able to access your event and choose their corresponding uh, level of access and you can use uh, this uh, feature here and then just add users that have a use uh, smooth comp account so just input this and then uh, you can invite them by clicking here add and then choose um, what kind of level of access they should have so I'm going now over to events and from events at the bottom here you have a create new event button so I will click this to create my first event demo like this and then I click next I can if I want to estimate my number of participants and then I click next I select my country whoops we are in Sweden so I will choose that and then uh, I'm in Stockholm so I will pick that and then I click next I will give my event a date and it's a one-day event and my time zone is Stockholm and then I click next then I could duplicate from a previous event that I did so all of my events would be here or I can choose from one of the smooth comp templates we have created some templates now this is a demo so it did not um, display as many templates as we have in the live site but I could choose a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu template or a judo template or some of the templates that we have created that will be available for you to pick here and then make sure that you pick the entries that you want to have copied so there's two things you need to do here first choose the template and then pick your entries so now the event will be created with this template and with these entries if I wanted to I could leave out maybe one of the entries I don't want to use this particular entry in my in my uh, in this event and then once I'm done I'm just gonna go ahead and click create event and now it's done so as you can see here it is it's very fast it's super easy to create new events now I'm going over to uh, the demo again and let's talk a little bit about our entries system the entry system is where you set up your different divisions the combination of the entry the class and the values will be the name of your division or your bracket uh, in this event we have entries boys girls 
juvenile boys and juvenile girls, men and women. And then we also have some absolute uh, classes and also we're selling t-shirts and we're using uh, the entry system for this. So I will click here on classes and that will show me all the different classes for boys. I have three classes in my event. One of them is belt, the other one is division, and the third one is weight. And as you can see, each class has different val values. Belt has all the different belt colors, white, gray, yellow, orange, and green. And here I have set up my different ages. I can also add rules to each uh, value here under the divisions or um, ages class. And if I wanted to, I could rename this. So instead of division, maybe I will name this age. In this class for six and seven year olds, I have created some rules that says that the user, and that means that the system is looking at the user's profile, they should be greater or equal with six years old. And they should be less or equal with seven. So anyone that is six or seven years old in their profile will be able to register for this event. And this is during the whole year, but I could also set it to be age on event start day. Then that means that they need to be six years old during at the day of the event. So that will look at the date for your event. And if they're not six years old, uh, then they won't be able to register. So I'm going back here to using year only. And then I'm going to add another rule because this is a boys uh, entry. So I want to have my user gender to be male. And then I forgot to add another the um, six year old uh, rule, but now it should be complete. So now I have a user uh, that is six or seven years old that is male and he will be able to register for this entry. Then I save. So make sure that you set up your um, rules properly uh, and you can combine this in very various ways. Uh, to make sure that you have only people uh, that are in the correct age and maybe correct belt uh, to register for, for this particular entry. During, uh, while we're here, um, then I'm going over to settings and pricing. That is the next tab. And here you can see that we set up the price for this entry. So the normal price is $40 and then there's a late fee. So when you set the, the different periods, once you pass um, the normal price period, it will turn into a late fee and uh, then it costs $20 more. There's also settings for availability. Uh, usually this is um, used if somebody is registra registering for an open class, then you might want to have a registration in the normal class first in order for them to register. Some organizers use this and some don't, so uh, it's up to you if you want to use it. But if I would to say that in order to register for boys, they need to have a registration uh, for a t-shirt before, or they need to be registered for juveniles boys, then the Sys SmoothConf will look uh, for that first. And if they don't have it, they won't be able to register. And at the bottom, you can decide how many times that a single user can register for this entry. Usually we have it for to one, but if you're allowing somebody to register for maybe two different weight classes, so they register for boys, but then they go for two different weight classes or two different belts or any combination you, you have, then you should set this to uh, the number that you allow. I will leave it to one like that. Um, here is the visibility and um, I can choose to display this. That is the default setting. Uh, I will display and count uh, the entries uh, in the public registrations list. 
So if I have this activated, then people will see how many people have registered for the boys entry. Um, you can set this on an individual entry level, but you can also decide uh, in another setting uh, if you want to display it uh, for everything or for nothing. But it's uh, we, we built this very um, um, dynamic, so you can use it either as a total setting or display it for individual entries. You can also decide if you want to use registration dates from the whole, the whole event or maybe open up registrations for this entry on a particular date or a particular time. Uh, we use this in our events for the open classes. What we learned is that if you allow people to register for both the normal wait and also the open wait, maybe several months before, people tend to um, be very um, uh, eager to sign up for everything. But after they competed in the normal entry, then a lot of people bail out for the absolute. So in order to uh, prevent this, we always have our registration dates for the open classes opening the same day so with this an online system like this and with their account it's very easy for them to wake up in the morning and they, they feel okay i'm going to compete in the open weight and then they can just register uh, but when i have a setting that only allow them to do that the same day i will have less no-shows so there will be less people signing up a lot of months before and then you just have a lot of walkovers so definitely recommend to use that. Then let's talk a little bit about uh, discounts and coupon codes. We prepared some coupon codes here. Uh, this first one says free entry. So let's uh, have a look. The name is free entry. There's a description here. It's valid from this date until this date. It can be used two times. Um, or I can set it to unlimited. Uh, the amount is 100% uh, on their total order, or I can give an amount in US dollars. So maybe I want to give them $50 as a discount. I can decide if it should be valid for all my events or just this webinar demo. And then I would just save my coupon code um, and then we're back here. Actually, it took me all the way back to my coupon codes in my organizer manager. So in my organizer manager, I have an overview of all the coupon codes that, that I created. So I will go back to the webinar demo. Um, then I'm going to switch over to another tab here. And then I'm going to show you our event finder. As I mentioned in the start, uh, we have an event finder that shows events all over the world. And as you can see, uh, Smooth Comp is now pretty much all over the world. Um, and then um, each of these um, pins here, uh, they uh, show uh, a specific event. So for somebody that want to find an event maybe in Sweden, then they would zoom in on their map like this. And under the map, you can see that you have all the events that are close to my location. So, and then I have an, another section here with more events. So right now it's displaying a lot of events because I'm kind of zoomed out here. But if I start zooming in on the map, and then I'm focusing right now on Stockholm area, and you can see that all the events adjust. So if I zoom in just a little bit more, and I'm getting closer here, it would only show me the events that are in the area around Stockholm. So make sure that you have the event uh, settings uh, properly set up so that your event displays where it should. And you can find this here. If you go to your admin section, and then you go to settings. Sorry, my bad. It's actually here under information. 
you'll see here that it says location. You already input uh, Sweden and Stockholm when you set up your event. Uh, and now you need to add arena name or venue and then the street address. So I have an event here um, at Skuder Skolväg 2, 131, uh, 37 in Nacka. And I want uh, my location to be automatically found with Google Maps. So I will just tick this box. And once I've done this, uh, then if Google finds the address, then it will dis display it on the map. So use that and make sure that you have um, that the event is showing where you want it to, to show. So once you set up your payment gateways, you have make sure you have all the entries uh, as you want them. You have your pricing, you have your coupon codes, re coupon codes ready. Um, it's time for you to open up the, the event for registrations. So I'm going over to settings now. And here I have event visibility. And there are three different levels. The first one is only organizer. When you are working with your event and when you're setting up everything, you should have it set to only organizer. Then the event is hidden and that is the default setting when you create your event. So it will be here on, as only organizer. Once you're ready to have your event going live, you should change this from here to everyone. Also include in the Smooth Comp demo event calendar. So we're on the demo, so it says demo. So I'm going to change that and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click save. Now my event is live. Now people can start uh, finding it and start uh, making registrations. I've also set up my registration uh, dates. So I did that previously when I, when I um, prepared the event. Please remember to do this. Um, I've set up that my registration should start uh, at this date. Uh, here's the late entry period when that's, is, that's starting and also when my registration closes. I'll give a chance for fighters to edit the registration and then also a chance to cancel. If I give them a chance for a refund, I can do that here. I can offer a refund when somebody cancel. Um, and um, in our events, we, we offer a refund because if you give an incentive for people to actually help you cancel, then you will have less no-shows in your events. So we give a 100% refund until a specific date, and then we give a 50% refund uh, at a later date. Uh, and that actually helps a lot. People know that they can get some money back or they can get some um, like a coupon code instead. There are two options here. Either I could get money back to my card or I could get a coupon code. And when people know that they can get something back, they will go in and log in and help you, um, you know, take away their name by canceling. And that, uh, of course, creates less no-shows in your event and, and makes the event much smoother. You don't have to wait for people. So make sure you set up your settings uh, for registration dates and also if you're offering refunds then do that here. Now uh, you can go over to the bracket packages here uh, and let's go over how to build a bracket package. We pre 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 prepared. We pre prepare. We prepared three different packages here. First, um, the one is here is the IBJJF bracket package. Uh, let's use that as an example. So, what bracket packages does is it's telling Smooth Comp what type of bracket it should choose when you have different amount of players in your groups. So in this example, it says from one to two players, always pick a single elimination bracket with a bronze match. If there are three players in a group, then please choose the three players comeback bracket. And above three, four to 128 or any number here, 
um, then choose the single elimination with a bronze match again. So once you have this set up, you can create all your uh, brackets that have the same fighting time um, just by clicking one button. It doesn't matter if any group has one or two or 50 players, the system will know what type of bracket it should choose for that group. Round robin brackets, one to one, choose single elimination and I can uh, click here and then change it if, if I wanted to. And here you can see all our different type of brackets. I can choose if I want to have a bronze match or a double bronze, a double elimination, bronze match, double bronze. We even have the loser brackets uh, going back to the final. So if you lose, you still have a chance to get a gold. And once you set this up, then it will speed up your bracketing a lot. Now it's time for you to create some brackets. Then I will head over to registrations here. And from here, you will see all the registrations coming in. This is the name of the bracket or the group that you created from entries. So you remember you had the boys entry and then you have the different classes, uh, belt, age and weight. And then people have choose white belt, six to seven year olds and then 28 kilos. So I have all my registrations in here and um, now I want to create some brackets. So I will filter for boys up here and then I'll pick all the white belts and the gray belts and the yellow belts, orange belts and green belts. Or actually no, I don't want I don't want the green belts. I only want this. And that displays um, 76 out of 273 groups. So that's a lot of um, groups to uh, create brackets for. Maybe I'm going to limit this a little bit more. So I'm going to click here and as you can see it instantly shows here that I'm filtering out a little bit. So yeah, let's just uh, choose all the white belts. Boys white belts. Um, then I'll click toggle all. And then I have all my groups here selected. And then at the bottom here, down here, I will click batch create brackets. And that will show me a list of all the groups that are now about to uh, be created and to have brackets. So we use groups as a name for everybody until they are bracketed. So right now these are just groups and then once I proceed I will create brackets for these groups. Then I click next. And now it's time for me to choose uh, the bracket that they should have. And now it's time to use the bracket packages. So for these boys, I will choose my IBJJF bracket package. Then I'll decide on what mat they should be fighting. Uh, rounds per match, uh, this is uh, just one round. If there would be a kickboxing or a tie boxing, maybe there would be more rounds. But for now, uh, this will be a, a grappling event, so it will just be one round. And then I know that they are fighting three uh, minutes. Um, and then I will estimate that each fight will take four minutes. This is our recommended setting, depending on, of course, on how fast you're working in your events. But um, it's a good recommendation. Uh, usually it ends up to be a very good schedule because you have some time to get people on the mat and then off the mat. And uh, the more experience you get as an organizer, you will uh, see, you know, how what time you should have there. Maybe you're working a bit slower then maybe you should add another minute. So maybe you have five minutes here instead. So um, you learn over time. And then I will choose the scoreboard that should be used. Uh, this can also be set uh, in the event uh, like, like as on the default scoreboard. Um, but I will use the Jiu Jitsu yellow and green scoreboard. And now I'm ready and then I will just create my brackets. 
and then uh, it takes some time there was some brackets to be created so I would just kick back and wait for the brackets to be created and then once they are created they will be distributed to that mat and after that I'm going to show you how you can um, rearrange them so now all these brackets are created for the boys entry and then I will go over here to brackets and schedule so now it's time to edit my schedule so I will click edit schedule here and then I will drag some of the weight classes from mat number one over to mat number two and mat number three and I will continue doing this until I believe I have a good schedule as you can see now the ETA was uh, around 20 minutes to 9 and this one was almost uh, 9 30 so when I save after I have moved some of the brackets you will see that the times are updating So now I have 9 here, almost 10 o'clock, a little bit after 8. And then I will continue to do this until I have the perfect schedule. So I'll need to add a little bit more here. Maybe I'll add something here. And then just continue doing this until you are done. Until you find an even schedule. Because of course you want all maths to end as even as possible that that's the most common scenario that you want to end all mats you don't want to have any dead mats or dead rings uh, that'll kill your tournaments if you're running late and people are waiting why is nothing happening on mat two and you you're not uh, having enough um, uh, fighters coming to the mat but with smooth comp it's almost impossible <laughs> to have dead mats because we're constantly adding matches and if I go in here in detail on mat number two this is where the people that uh, are using the scoreboards the people that are working on mat number two they should be working from this view so they have all their different brackets to the left here and then all the corresponding matches to the right and this algorithm that Smoothcom is using is trying to give the fighters the correct time for rest between their matches and you can actually adjust this if you want so I'm just gonna go back very fast here and then I'm going over to uh, schedule settings and here it says that give minimum one match of rest and then two matches before a final of rest so with this setting the minimum rest should be one match you can also change this to minutes and maybe you want like this oops 10 minutes and then maybe five minutes so depending on your settings the schedule will adjust accordingly so use schedule settings to set up the the match rest settings and you will see that that will reflect here so once it's time to um, to uh, start a fight I would do that from here but we're not there yet I'm just gonna show you a little bit more on how you can move and copy fighters what I like to show you now is a is a really cool uh, tool that we're using um, because sometimes this happens I have a lot of groups with just one fighter so what I did now is I activated the advanced options for my filter and then I say I put in one here it says find groups with only one participant and as you can see now I have some fighters here that are alone I was not able to find a group for them but what I can do here is I could duplicate this and then here I'm gonna find groups with 2 to 100 participants instead 
So right now, my left tab shows me all the boys here, but only the singles. I can even filter out only those that don't have a bracket. So right now, it shows me all the ones, all the singles, all the ones that haven't been able to, um, to find a group to fight in. And then here in the other tab, it's showing me the same thing. Let's filter for no brackets. Then I will just see groups that are not bracketed yet. And then let's see who should Tyrone fight with. He's eight to nine years old, under 44 kilos, but there's nobody to fight um, in his weight class. So I might need to uh, move him up a little bit. So let's see if I can find something for him. Well, that was pretty hard. Um, so I'll just maybe have to pretend here. Let's uh, try to move uh, Tyrone. So I will mark his name like this uh, to another uh, division. So I'm just going to, as an example, I'm just going to move him here. So I will copy his te this text here for this group. I'm going to move him here instead. So now I have copied this string. I'll triple click here and then I just click Command C or Control C or right click and then click copy. Now this is copied and then I could just go over to my other tab and with Tyrone marked like this I will click move and then I will paste here and then just activate that and then click move and now he's here so that is a very useful uh, pro tip on how you can move uh, single players to a new division just by having two windows open like this. Um, now I, I, I was using two tabs like this. Um, actually it's even better if you can have it like this. Uh, so you have one window here and then just the other one aligned uh, next to the other one like this. So that will make it even faster to work with. All right, that's um, how to move single players. So to move somebody, just click their name, click move down here, and then you can either scroll and find that division, or if you have copied something, you can just paste it in. If you wanna copy somebody, um, Maybe you have Ivan here fighting and he should also fight in the open category or he should fight uh, in another entry. Maybe he's fighting Gi here, but he want to fight in no Gi as well. Then do the same. Copy his name uh, or activate uh, the box next to his name. Sorry. Activate this box and then click copy. And then find where he should fight. Absolute man. He's a white belt and in the adult division. And then let uh, Smooth Comp choose the group automatically. Uh, I could choose a ma the group manually if I want to put him in another group. But since this group exists, it's easier to just pick the group automatically. And then I would just click copy registration. And that will create a copy of Ivan in that other entry. So to work fast with your registrations, use the filter. Uh, you can search by name up here. You can search by entry here. You can limit your search for a specific entry by adding the different uh, values here, white or gray, uh, six to seven year olds or 28 kilos. Uh, now I had a filter that was applied for showing me only groups with no brackets. So if I remove that, I should be able to see. Oh, okay, there was nobody there. So as you can see, it's very fast like this. So if I just pick something or remove something, it instantly updates this view, which makes it easier for people, a lot of people working with this view at the same time. There could be one or 10 people working here at the same time, and you will see changes happening very fast. 
there are more filters up here. Um, approved is if the fighter is approved to your event. If they pay by a credit card, they are automatically approved. And this is the approved box. Only fighters that are checked like this are approved and can be placed into a bracket. So if you have a group with unapproved players, they will not be placed in the bracket. You need to approve them first. There are filters for those who have paid or not. If they pay by credit card, they are automatically checked as paid. Uh, if you're not using an online payment solution, maybe you're um, receiving bank transfers or they pay at ca in cash at the event, then uh, you need to manually check them off as paid. Then you click this little small money icon here. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we start the first fight is how you can split your brackets. I already showed you how you can move an entire bracket from one mat to another. But maybe you have all the finals going on mat number three. Let's have that as an example. So I'm clicking here on my uh, boys white eight to nine years old uh, division and I want to move the final to mat number three. So I will just drag over this one which is the final uh, or just click on it. And when I do that, it activates this box. Add selected matches to a new block. So I will click here and then I will put this match instead on from mat number two, I will put it on mat number three. And after a while, Smooth Comp moves that fight and it also displays here in the colors. So now I have my green colors, which was the original mat, mat number two. And then I have my final going on mat number three instead. And if I go back here, you will see that here it says final. And if I hover over this bracket, you will see it relates to this one. So if I hover over, you will see it will activate both of them. And then I can just go on doing that for all the finals that I want to move. So let's activate this one, move it to mat number three instead. Go back to brackets and schedule to see my changes. And now I have two finals going here. If I want to reorder them, I can just click edit schedule. And then maybe this final should go before that one. Then I can just re rearrange them like that and then save. This toggle box shows completed brackets or every, all the brackets. Uh, this one shows more information about your bracket. There's a TV mode that you should use if you're displaying this on a big TV. So then you will activate TV mode. And that will show like this. Right now it's showing uh, my upcoming f fights. It will not be like that when you're using a, a neutral account. I'm logged in with my account, so it shows my upcoming fights. And then from here, you can print your brackets. So clicking all brackets will take you to a print view. Uh, please make sure that you always print your brackets uh, as a safety measure. So I can just pick any mat here or print them all. If I click mat one here and then click submit, it will only show me the brackets for mat number one and then just go over here to print and that will give me this print dialog and then I can just easily print out my brackets. Um, I always do this in my events, never use them, but it's it feels good to have them if something w were to happen. Now the last part is how to start the actual fight. So let's go back here to mat number two and then click view mat. And from here, I'm gonna start uh, one of the fights. Actually, you can see that uh, the first one uh, that was already started and completed. So match uh, number one on mat number two. That is what these numbers says. It says mat two, 
match number two. Um, each time that you complete a fight, uh, it will be removed from this list. So once all these matches are completed, then this mat is done for the day. So I will click here and then I'll see a button for scoreboard, the actual bracket, and then who is fighting, Bill and Drew. And if I click uh, on one of these profiles, I, I will see their profile uh, page. But I'm, I wanna start the fight, so I'm gonna click scoreboard. And that opens up the most beautiful scoreboard. Um, and then I can use my mouse to start uh, the clock, or I can use my keyboard. So the space bar starts and stops the clock. I can use the mouse to click in this area to give points, or, or I can use the keyboard. So if I want to give points for Bill, I will use um, the keyboards, and we have uh, the keyboard layout if you wanna, uh, want, want to use that. So you can put some small stickers on your uh, keyboard, but I can just add points like this or I could remove them. Um, and the same thing goes for Drew. So I can add penalties and advantages. I can add points or uh, deduct points like this. So, and once the fight is done, I will stop the clock. I will click end game. And then I will pick the winner. And here you can see that it was Bill. He won by points. 9 to 3, so I will choose the winner. Winner was Bill by points. Congratulations, Bill. And then I will click Save. And then I need to confirm one more time. OK. And then it says Save to Bracket, meaning that the match is saved. It's online. And he will have progress now in the bracket. So I can click Back to Bracket. And I'll see here that Bill versus Drew. Now Bill is here instead. If I hover over the fight, I will see the score, uh, the time, and everything that happened. So that is all for this uh, webinar. Uh, the things that you need to solve before your first event. In the next webinar, we're going to go over how you can actually run the event a little bit more in detail. But that's all I wanted to um, share with you today. Thanks for listening and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.